Mama turn all negative activity around. Mama, we the daughters of Earth, the sweet crone Trinity, have been inspired in the spirit of compassion for the well-being of our ancient cosmic family to understand why you connected this trio to demonstrate the magic of your power to awaken and protect our universal ancient family. Welcome to Talk with Mama Yah on Truth Uncompromised. Mama Yah, empower our ability with the authority of our common purpose. We are one in the best interest of our global family. In your essence, as ancient of ancient, Mama, please allow this Trinity to naturally raise upright our fallen sisters to elevate them to their true celestial level in mind and spiritual substance. The sweet crone trinity, Mama Yah, El, Sistar, Myra, and Sila Eliana Bay. Good evening. And this is Mama Yah. And welcome to the callers on the line. Tonight, our discussion will be on truth. Today, I was inspired to write this. What I've learned is that my truth may not be your truth. I choose to remain true to myself. Yet, I'm flexible to understand what is true for you. Communication is the key. Listening is the tool of the soul. Truth defined. As a noun, truth is the quality or state of being true. For instance, he had to accept the truth of her accusation. The synonyms are veracity, truthfulness, Verity, sincerity, candor, honesty. The next definition is that which is true or in accordance with fact or reality. The noun is the truth. For instance, tell me the truth. The synonyms are what actually happened or the case. The third definition is a fact or belief that is accepted as true. Plural noun is truth. For instance, the emergence of scientific truth. Synonyms are fact, verity, certainty, certitude. On the blog, divineconnectionchurch.wordpress.com, you will find links to philosophynow.org, plato.stanford.edu, iep.utm.edu, 3-truth.com, and goodreads.com. Those will be posted after this program. Where is truth? Does truth lurk in darkness? Or is there a light that could help reveal truth? Can truth ever be found? Is there any absolute truth? Are there absolutes to be found anywhere? Is truth within you? Is truth within me? An image that was posted this week on Facebook read, you don't need religion to have morals. If you can't determine right from wrong, you lack empathy, not religion. Ponder that. 
In philosophy, epistemology is the study of the sources of knowledge and of the methods for obtaining knowledge. There are numerous philosophical theories concerning truth and its sources that have been around since before the time of the Greek philosophers. However, few theories endure as originally devised for more than one, two, or three generations. What the next generation realizes, no, when the next generation realizes that the past conjectures did not answer life's questions, a new guru makes his or her debut to seeking soul. His or her smooth presentation is persuasive and is picked up by professors, publishers, and a curious populace. The four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz are, one, be impeccable with your word, meaning speak with integrity, say only what you mean, avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. The second agreement, don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say or do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. The third agreement is don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. So don't make assumptions. Number four is always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best, and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. Recently, Ruiz published the Fifth Agreement, that encourages us to see the truth, to recover our authenticity, and to change the message we deliver, not only to ourselves, but to everyone around us. That being said, I have very little to say to you about what truth is. I can only say what my truth is. And throughout my life, my truth has changed from year to year, month to month, week to week, day to day, sometimes hour to hour. So I am going to open the queue right now And if anyone feels that they would like to make a statement or ask a question about truth, I'm going to let you speak your mind. So please hit star six, and it will cue you to hit the number one, and I will wait. I don't want to have a lot of dead space. 
So if anyone there has anything to say, hit star six. Okay, no one has anything to say. So I'm going to read to you from the first link that I mentioned what is true. And it is from philosophynow.org. These were essays written to answer the question, what is true? So this is by Mark Vernon. True beliefs portray the world as it is. False beliefs portray the world as other than it is. A straight ruler appears bent when half submerged in a glass of water. What is the truth of the matter? Truth's character is both logical and empirical. The logical principle of non-contradiction ensures that the contradictory proposition, the ruler is straight, and the ruler is not straight, cannot both be true at the same time. And in principle, observation should settle which is the case. In practice, things are not so simple. And that is the crux of what is true. That is why I say that I will stick to my truth until I can be shown another truth. At plato.stanford.edu, under truth, it reads that truth is one of the central subjects in philosophy. It is also one of the largest. Truth has been a topic of discussion in its own right for thousands of years. Moreover, a huge variety of issues in philosophy relate to truth, either by relying on, these, uh, on theses about truth or implying theses about truth. It would be impossible to survey all there is to say about truth in any coherent way. Instead, this essay concentrated on the main themes in the study of truth in the contemporary philosophical literature. It attempted to survey the key problems and theories of current interest and show how they relate to one another. A number of other entries investigated many of the topics in greater depth. Generally, discussion of the principal argument was left to them. The goal of this essay was only to provide an overview of the current theory. Many of the papers mentioned could be found in the anthologies edited by edited by Blackburn and Simmons in 1999 and Lynch in 2001. There are also a number of book-length surveys of the topics discussed, including Burgess and Burgess, 2011, Kirkham, 1992, and Kuhn in 2003. The problem of truth is in a way easy to state what truths are, and what, if any, makes them true. But this simple statement masks a great deal of controversy, 
whether there is a metaphysical problem of truth at all. And if there is, what kind of theory might address it? Are all standing issues in the theory of truth? This particular link at playo.stanford.edu is a lengthy treatise on truth. So that will be there at divineconnectionchurch.com. I'll open the queue. And if anyone wants to raise their hand, just hit star six and you can come in. Okay, no one raised their hand. At the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, the definition of truth is, philosophers are interested in a constellation of issues involving the concept of truth. A preliminary issue, although somewhat subsidiary, is to decide what sorts of things can be true. Is truth a property of sentences, which are linguistic entities in some language or other? Or is truth a property of proposition, non-linguistic, abstract, and timeless entity? The principal issue is, what is truth? It is the problem of being clear about what you are saying when you say some claim or other is true. The most important theories of truth are the correspond excuse me, the correspondence theory, the semantic theory, the deflationary theory, the coherence theory, and the pragmatic theory. They are explained and compared here. Whichever theory of truth is advanced to settle the principal issue, there are a number of additional issues to be addressed. First, can claims about the future be true now? Let's think about that. So, over 200 years ago, that people could fly was not the truth. However, today, people fly every hour on the hour. Of course, they fly in machines called airplanes. So today's truth was not true 200 years ago. Number two, can there be some algorithm for finding truth, some recipe or procedure for deciding for any claim in the system of, say, arithmetic? whether the claim is true. I'm not sure if I have an example for that, but if you do, I will open the queue shortly. Can the predicament, can the predicate is true be completely defined in other terms so that it can be eliminated without loss of meaning from any context in which it occurs. Number four, to what extent do theories of truth avoid paradox? Number five, is the goal of scientific research to achieve truth? So that is from the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, and that link will be on the website Divine Connection Church. Meanwhile, back at the board, if you hit star six, your voice can be heard. I said this before. And I'm going to repeat it again. And this is at www.3-truths.com. 
Where is truth? Does truth lurk in darkness, or is there light that could help reveal truth? Can real truth ever be found? Is there any absolute truth? Are there absolutes to be found anywhere? Is truth within you? Is truth within me? And that is epistemology. One of the more recent theories in epistemology is a revived, revised theory of constructivism. This may be more descriptive than many other ideas have been. Summarized, it states that no two persons see the same rainbow. Corollary one, no two eyes see the same rainbow. Corollary two, the pot of gold is forever elusive. And if we talk about perspective, this is from Mama Yah's perspective, where each one of you are sitting, you are looking at a different view. You have a different view. I'm looking out of a window into twilight. That means that it's getting dark outside. I see the edges of trees. However, you might not have a window at all. Or if you have a window, you might be overlooking buildings or you might be overlooking a lake. So each one of us has a different perspective. We have a caller in the queue. I'm going to open your mic. Good evening, caller. Love and light. Love and light. This is Amira in Alabama. Good evening, Amira. How are you? I am wonderful because there's nobody blocking your call tonight. Everybody canceled. Yes. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) you were saying about scientific research. That's why I chimed in. The scientific research, search for the truth. I'm like in the uh, chapter two of Behold the Pale Horse reading. Chapter one are the actual documents that he published in chapter one showing how they used the sciences, the scientists, the colleges, all the brilliant minds in order to come up with their truth that they wanted in order to manipulate all these resources, which included us, of course, for their end goals. So I think in the past it's been exploited and manipulated for the benefit of these dark ones. So my answer would be no, scientific research has not been used in order to explore or discover the truth. Thank you for letting me chime in. I love your call. One heart, one mind, one spirit, I yield. Well, thank you, Amira. Um, I do want to say that what people call scientists are people who have inquisitive minds. They want to know how things work. And I truly believe that the they that you're talking of is the present empire. And I would suggest to you that when we talk about the ancient of ancients, when we talk about the mama principle, the divine feminine principle, we need to rewind so that we can fast forward to what is the power of the divine feminine today. I think that what you brought to light is extremely relevant, but I would suggest that we, how can I say that? Because to stop something, you always have to replace it with something else. So, of course, I'm not naive, 
and I'm not um, unconscious of what you call the dark forces. However, I believe in giving power to my truth. And my truth is that even in my weaker moment, I may relegate blame or power uh, or credit to something outside of myself, which would be them or they. But I would suggest that we come back to the I. And where does my scientific research begin? Where do I begin to define truth? Are you still there, Amira? Yes. Yes. So are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I did go online, and I did read what they say about truth. However, in a conversation between you and I, where do we begin to take responsibility for our power to be the scientific researcher to find what is truth for me and what is true for you. Now. Now. I didn't say when. I said where do we begin? How do we begin to to reclaim the power of defining truth for ourselves with individuals like yourself who is making us aware that we were unaware of other people using their truth and we need to do what you're saying so it started with me listening to these calls That's a great answer. Now we're here. We are here. And you pulled up a book called Behold the Pale Horse. I pulled up a website called the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. And if we, from our personal perspective, by the way, what do you see out in front of you? Is there a window in your room? I'm sitting on my front porch. Mm -hmm. And what do you see in front of you? Is there a street? Is there a field? Is there a lake? What is in front of you? Immediately in front of me is my front yard. Mm -hmm. And then lots and lots of tall trees. Mm -hmm. Small road that leads to the house and leads out to another small road. So Mm -hmm. it's sort of like rural. Uh Uh-huh. And see... I'm in a rural area within a city. You are in a rural area. How near to a city? Driving, it takes about 10 minutes to get downtown. Okay. And it has two lights, so (laughs) that's how big the city is. (laughs) I understand, And and that's brilliant because... Again, I'm talking about perspective. You have a perspective. I have a perspective. And let me just read to you what I started out with, which I only was inspired to write today. What I learned is that my truth may not be your truth. I choose to remain true to myself, yet I'm flexible to understand what is true for you. Communication is the key. Listening is the tool of the soul. What does that say to you? It says to me that I am learning 
my truth right now and building on it. I started maybe in September of last year when I discovered this these different sets of calls and the book that they recommend that we read. That's why I'm reading again. So I'm in the discovery mode. Okay. Now, you might say, Mama, yeah, you already know. And if I said to you, each call that I host, I am learning something new. Does that mean that I am in the same place with you, I am behind you, or I am in front of you? I would believe that you are way in front of me. Mm, Light would years. You? <laughs> would you? Yes. And I might say, because I'm flexible to understand what is true for you, that we stand side by side in communicating. We stand side by side in listening and I'm learning from you and you are learning from me. And that's my perspective. That may not sit completely well with you, but for me, Every moment is a learning experience. I believe for my truth is that I came into embodiment to learn lessons. And if the soul is eternal, as all the sages say it is, then the soul is always learning lessons. So there might be truths that you know that I don't know and vice versa. And that's why communication for me is so important. That's how I got to do this radio show because of my thirst to communicate. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So I learned a long time ago, someone told me, always give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Before you doubt, yourself, doubt everything outside of you, because where you are right this moment, I cannot define that for you, and that is what they did. They engaged their so-called best minds to define other people. And that is what we have to counter. And the best way to counter that is to never give yourself the benefit, I'm sorry, to always give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Now tell me what I mean by that. Always give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Hmm. That's you actually did it. You you actually did it by quoting from chapter two of Behold the Pale Horse, or chapter one, about the scientists and the ecologists. Yeah. Because you said that they manipulated the the resources. 
Is that what you said? Right, and I'm under the influence of their manipulation, just becoming aware of it, and now needing to discover my own truth. Now, repeat that last part, and now... Needing to discover my own truth. So once you place your foot on the path of discovering your own truth, you are giving yourself the benefit Okay. Of the doubt. The doubt now lays behind you with them. Thank you. You understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, we as women forfeited our power so that men could experience power. Actually, it is the mother forfeited her power so that the son could experience power. But it went too far, didn't it? Would you say it went too far? Because? Because women are oppressed. And disrespected. They're oppressed oppressed by the very people that they give birth to. Right. That has to stop. Okay. Now I understand why it went too far. Yeah. Okay. That Mm -hmm. madness is over. Because women are reclaiming their personal power. Now let's change the 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 um noun and let's say that people of color forfeited their power so that non colored people could experience power. That experiment went too far. <laughs> so now people of color are reclaiming their power. Now, let's look at it in another way. Mother Earth forfeited her power so that mankind could experience power. That just went too far. So Mother Earth is reclaiming her power. Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah. And what exactly is Mother Earth doing to reclaim her power? She's realigning herself, and that's why all the earthquakes, the storms, and the weather, and so forth. Now, that sounds like truth, doesn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me propose another theory here. Let's suppose that the earthquakes and the storm and the volcanoes erupting have been, is all part of the activity of Mother Earth. That this has been going on since the first formulation of the planet. As a matter of fact, it could be that the planet was actually formed by earthquakes, volcanoes, and storms, and that that is the natural truth of Gaia, Mother Earth, that it is an eruptive, stormy, wet (laughs) planet. However, because mankind only survives for a century, mankind cannot dictate that this has been going on only through stories. Hello? 
Sorry, I muted because my puppy was making noise. Okay. So we have the word story. We have the word parable. We have the word his story, history. And we're finding out that some of his story is not the absolute truth. So where do we begin? What, what do we begin to understand? Not where. What do we begin to understand about truth? We begin to understand that the truth is here. Perhaps we need to search deeper to find it in the, um, the ancestral language and the ancient ones because these who have uh, abused Mother Earth took the natural law of Mother Earth and, and converted it or corrupted it in order to control mankind and, and, and the resources. So I think we need to go back and get those natural laws and understand it. Okay, I'm going to say something to you, and I want you to interpret what I'm going to say. Do you agree to do that? Yes. Okay. You ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there is only one of us here. Period. Period. That that's just that's it. Uh, there's only one of us here. Yes. One mind, one heart, one spirit. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Too easy. <laughs> but That's perfect. I mean, we got the best teacher, Dr. H. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. H. Henderson. Went in, yes, Dr. Henderson went inside and listened to hear that. And I will say to you that one of the greatest experiences that I ever had was when one of my teachers told me just before going into a meditation, imagine the world without you in it. Okay, um, I can imagine the world without me in it, but what are you saying you would like to hear? Would you what like me I to say? say how, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel okay because I will still be here just at a different vibration. Okay. So then, in fact, we are not three-dimensional entities. We are vibration. Yes. Hmm. Have we hit upon a common truth 
That means that it's truth for you and truth for me. It's common between us. Yes. Okay. So we are vibration. We agree with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go back to the scientists and the ecologists. We are vibration. So what they were manipulating, the resources that they manipulated were in fact vibration. How does that feel? How does that seem or feel? Feel. It feels wonderful because now I understand it. Okay. So let me read again (laughs) what I wrote today. What I've learned is that my truth may not be your truth. I choose to remain true to myself, yet I'm flexible to understand what is truth for you. Communication is the key. Listening is the tool of the soul. Does that pretty much sum up our exchange? Yes. Good. So I learned something, and you learned something. We have another caller. Good evening, Anonymous. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And that's the truth. This is 208 Tom. I thank you, ladies. Good evening, Tom. That's why. Do you have anything to add to our discourse? I could always come up with something. I think uh, I'd like I'd like to comment on a couple things, and that's and that's an ad. I I've always believed, learn the truth and live it; it'll set you free. And I've also believed that the truth always remains the truth. It's going to be applied differently. And and when in doubt, check it out. And that's why I was blessed with two ears and two eyes. Two ears to hear and two eyes to see. So if I'm in doubt whether it's truth or not, I could check it out. That's an old military term. Our great brother refers to that often. Anyway, anyway, I was uh, just enjoying listening. But I couldn't resist chiming in and saying thank you. (laughs) Okay. So I say we have two ears and one mouth, which means that we should listen twice as much as we talk. That's exactly what I was saying. (laughs) That's my truth. (laughs) That's that's how you you gain uh, true knowledge and wisdom, sister, I believe. I've always uh, believed that, that. You know, that's why we were blessed with two eyes to see and two ears to hear and one mouth to speak. And until you really, you know, just like I I listened to what my uh, sisters were saying. And I've heard my sister Amira many times say, Tom, ask the bestest questions. And and there for a while, uh, it was either Amira or me on there first, you know. But uh, I just kind of got out of the competition thing, you know, and... I enjoy sitting back and listening to all the new callers. And you, you got a great call. I, I commented to Rhonda you know, the other night. I said that people really need to pay attention and get behind what's going on here because uh, it's about. You, you mentioned something about colored people. Well, you know that was that was one of the weak links there when they started calling the melanated ones colored people. You know they went through the stage of black people. They went through this and they went through that, but. But I still direct everybody back, you know, when they get off course on that uh, colored thing. Oh, color is the absence of uh, uh, black is the absence of color. And so when you add the colored thing, then it takes on a different content and a context, you know, how you speak about it. 
but and that and that's really my truth but you know when people uh, really don't understand or they really haven't done their homework and they really haven't paid attention that uh you know and we hear a lot about the native americans you know and this and that but we're all melanated to a more or lesser degree we've all established that in the last couple of years if we've been listening and paying attention to our great brother and uh about the time you think these calls can't get any better, they always do, just like prophecy the other night. You know, it was it was a real total powerhouse. And uh, it just shed a lot of lights on many subjects. And we had a lot of good participation in there. And there were some questions that were, they were kind of not totally answered and clarified. And, you know, you kind of, got to really look and pay attention it it, uh all things they will disclose themselves because one thing for sure remains the same the same truth the evil dark forces cannot exist in the light and we are definitely on a strong ascension path we're quickening our ascension and so you know the 3d thinking is not going to be able to exist in this world and the now to me, means a new oneness world coming together in unity and oneness. That's, you know, and like our brother Jimi Hendrix said, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, then there will be peace on earth. You know, there, there's many things that's been said a lot, but uh, you really got to get in there, learn the truth, live it. It shall set you free. There's no other way around it. May I ask you a question? Absolutely. I ask you one. <laughs> what <laughs> color is vibration? What color is vibration? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I guess that would be on what the, what was uh, producing the vibration. You know. Back in 67, the, the throne, they took out the music. They took the music out of music. You know, they changed the vibrational frequency. And our sis Rhonda mentioned uh, monatomic gold, you know, uh, here because that was one of Dr. Blair's favorite uh, momentums, I guess you say. But I don't know. I guess would uh, what would uh, what color would <coughs> vibrational be? I guess, you know, everything on this planet, I believe, has a different vibrational signature frequency. And like I told Empress Sharma the other night on on the, the prophecy call, she was talking about, you know, when I was a young kid, I remember when they had these, what they get together with, a they call a brush harbor, and they had celebrations, a decoration day, you know, for the, the deceased ones. But anyway... It wasn't uncommon. In fact, it was almost a must. If you really want to become grounded with Gaia, you're going to have to take off your shoes. Just like, oh, uh, our brother uh, Moses, he was always instructed, hey, take those sandals off. When you get around that uh, Ark of the Covenant, you're going to get zapped. And so it's about grounding to really get the true benefit of your frequency you know, if you're not grounded with it, you know, and our our ancestors lived in balance with the land, you know, running around barefooted or were leather moccasins, which are conductive. But Sister Sharma, she says she missed the smell of wood. Well, that was one of the ways they started dumbing us down. If you put wood between you and, and Gaia, you're going to not be grounded. Is that correct? I'm listening. Well, I'm... I'm listening. Uh, I, I'm listening too. I guess I was just making sure I'm not let's just listen to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's very interesting. Uh, have you seen the film Powder? The film what? P O Powder. P O W D E R. Well, I I. I don't know. I'm not much of a movie fan. I've never, you know, a lot of people have movie heroes and stuff like that. But but, but this is a particular movie. Yeah, and well, I'm, I'm going saying, to suggest. I've never been much of a movie fan. Okay. I'm going um, to suggest 
that there are 18 of the callers on this call tonight, and I appreciate every one of you. Find the movie Powder, and one week let's discuss that film because I want to stick with We Are Vibration because we think, like you said, that we are this three-dimensional being. However, right in this room where I am and in the rooms where you are, there are up to 14 different dimensions. So your homework, (laughs) I love it. This is where the professor in me comes out, is to explore the fifth, sixth, and seventh dimension. And the information is on the Internet because the Internet is the culmination of all that we have learned. The Internet is the ultimate encyclopedia, and it comes from the core of each one of our beings to become the storehouse of all of our ideas. So don't go to the eighth and the ninth and the tenth. Just say, let's do, we're in the fifth dimension. We've been here. We're here. Now let's reach and see if we can get some information about the sixth and the seventh and the eighth dimension. Well, I think we're going to live that the, one very shortly. Yeah, I think we could get there probably by next Wednesday. I would like to comment <laughs> you on know. your powder. When you, when you say powder, the first thing that comes to my mind based on my reading and understanding uh when the first thing you we say powder, I think of manna, the sacred manna which was provided for the people, you know, the Israelites, and they were out wandering around the wilderness on their way to the promised land. Uh, they were provided with this uh, manna, which was a snow powder. It looked like they thought it snowed. But anyway, also when I when I know what I know about Moses, Moses was one of the all time probably the all-time greatest alchemist. But he's also uh, blessed that he know how to deal with monatomics. Anyway, my belief is that the, the manna, which was provided due to what I know about monatomics and such, that it is monatomic. Because I relate to that when Moses came back off the mountain and all of his uh, followers had... Uh, melted down all their jewelry, and they'd made this um, metallic uh, statue of a calf to worship. Well, Moses, he was a little bit out of shape, so he uh, he melted it back down and turned it into fine powder, and that's why I translate that. And I, I listen to your music, sister, every, every time when you close out your show, translate it in love. So anyway... If you if you take all that in its proper perspective, and uh, you look at that, it, it's like there's a, there's a lot to be said about that. And all like we just established, all things on this planet have their own vibrational signature frequency, and and these monatomics are no exception. And that's why the true monatomics, if they're dealt with properly, they are the ultimate healing mechanism because they disrupt the bad frequencies and they literally turn your damaged cells and your DNA back to acting normally because they uh, disrupt the bad frequencies and cause them to take back on their normal frequencies and so it, it causes healing. And when you say monatomic, are you spelling it M-O-N-A-T-O-M-I-C-S? I can I can translate it out for you also. Monatomic M O 
is molecularly orbitally rearranged elements. That's ORME. Anyway, monatomic is non-metallic elements. And it takes a certain process to convert them. But anyway, monatomic, M-O-N-O, mono means singular atoms. Monatomic. So monatomic, M-O-N-O, mono. You don't know, like mono? Right. Anyway, that's, that's monatomics, monatomics, elements. Okay. Well, that's something for me to look up. And yeah. I hold that that's why we communicate, that's why we listen, because there's only one of us here. <laughs> and because there's only one, one of us one here, one we have to listen to the atoms within the one. You are an atom. I'm an atom. Amir is an atom. Ron is an atom. Each one of us is an atom in the body of the great being. That's how I look at it. So that's my truth. And we are at the end of this call. I keep it an hour because I like for you to think about this call. I like for you to come back. You know, in the beginning, there were 37 people on this call. Now it ranges from 15 to 19. These people on this call are the ones who need to be here, want to be here, love to be here. And I love you, and I feel your love. We have another caller, Tom. All, all, all I can say is one final closing comment, please. Uh, yes. All I can say is those 37, if there's only 17 now, those others need to wake up and they need to come back and pay attention because this is happening that the, the feminine are regaining their space that they have uh, literally uh, forfeited, if you will, they are regaining it because it's it's what's happening now, and it's, it's definitely going down, and they need to pay attention as to why that the feminine will regain their space and they will regain their respect because that's what it's the, all these hombres have got to yield to that, you know, that, uh, hey, these women, they need your respect, and get behind them. Don't get with them. Get behind them. And I, with that, I Thank yield. Thank you. Thank you, John. And you're doing it. Okay. <laughs> we have um, Egypt. You want to say something? <laughs> yes, I know you asked about vibration and truth. And um, from what I'm gathering through conversation and through listening and at the same time meditating on your questions, basically the way I feel that the truth is the vibrations that is now and in the past as we know it because it's the knowledge of what we know. The vibrations from what we know give us truth. So things in the future is actually only for those who can feel through vibration, see through vibration and understand through vibration the future, which will give them truth, okay? But for the majority, I think, of us, it is the vibrations of now and in the past to be a witness to truth. And I ah, that's an interesting word, witness, to witness, witness the truth. Now, may I ask you a question? Yes. See, because I'm here to learn. People think that I'm here to teach. Actually, someone asked me, am I a psychic? <laughs> well, we all have psychic energy. 
and I believe that I tap into my psychic energy, but I don't claim to be a psychic. But my question to you is, then, is truth what you witness? Truth is what two or more people witness. Hmm. So in other words, one person alone cannot witness the truth. One person alone can create the truth, but to be, yeah, to be understood as truth, it has to be two or more. To give an essence of what I'm saying is someone can tell you something, but it may not be true. But from what the person said, if you investigated, if you went into depth about what they said, the truth will come from another. And you put those together. And with those being together, you will actually come to know what is the truth and what is not. But you cannot develop truth by what one person said. But you said that one can create, but it needs to be witnessed Yes. To be true. Listen, we're going to stop on that note. We're going to stop on that note. I'm going to repeat this sentence. I'm going to play the music. We're going to come back next week, and we're going to pick up from this point. So please, everyone, be here. This is important, and I want mm -hmm. you to feel this, understand this, and come back with your comments next week. One can create. Two or more must witness. Thank you, yeah. Egypt. Peace. Okay. Love, peace, truth, freedom, and justice. All right. Good night. I'm going out with love translation, and I love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you.